welcome to this week's edition of Engineering Announcements, prepared for you by the Engineering Information Service of the Independent Broadcasting Authority. It's nice to be back again after the long bank holiday weekend, and we hope you've all recovered from the Jubilee celebrations. This morning, we're pleased to announce that the world's first broadcast of the Ambisonics 45J surround sound system will be made by Radio City in Liverpool in conjunction with the IBA in a couple of weeks' time. More about this in a moment. Also, we have a special report on the 10th International Television Symposium, which was held in Montreux in Switzerland last week. And in Transmitter News, we'll be mentioning five relays, two which came into programme service last Friday, one at Cornholm on the West Yorkshire-Lancashire boundary, the other at Thetford in Norfolk. Then a relay expected to start testing on Friday at Millam Park up in Cumbria, and another hope to start in the next few weeks is in South Wales at Ustalafira. Also in Wales is the two-channel relay at Wrexham Ross, which we anticipate starting testing in a week or two. But the big news this week is that the world's first transmissions of an exciting new all-British developed surround sound system are to be made later in the month. The system is usually known by the code letters 45J, and the tests are to be made by an independent local radio station, Radio City, in conjunction with the IBA on Thursday the 23rd of June. If you were able to hear our feature a few weeks ago, you'll remember that surround sound is a relatively new term for systems which create a sound image all around the listener. Quadrophony was often used, but this term specifically implies four loudspeakers. Surround sound implies a system designed to cope with a flexible number of loudspeakers. 45J has been developed by a team from Oxford and Reading Universities, and the designers believe it offers a good compromise between a service for the discerning listener and a satisfactory system for monophonic and stereophonic reception. You may remember that these are the two yardsticks that have to be borne in mind. Now, it's unlikely that many uh, will be able to make uh, direct use of the transmissions because 45J ambisonics decoders aren't generally available at the moment, and this is natural since a decision on whether it will be broadcast permanently hasn't been reached. But the tests will be useful in assessing the two sides of the question, quality and compatibility. The system designers have devised a number of variants of 45J which will give greater degrees of two-channel realism to the sound and perhaps one of these will be found feasible to transmit. These experimental transmissions from Radio City, made in cooperation with IBA engineers, will incidentally include a broadcast from Liverpool's uh, Anglican Cathedral of Marla's Eighth Symphony on the Choir of a Thousand Voices. So there you are, although there's still a great deal of analysis and discussion to be done, including international discussions this week, by the way, these tests may be a step down the road to a UK and indeed international standard for surround sound transmissions. Last Friday, the 10th International Television Symposium and Technical Ex Exhibition at Montreux, Switzerland, closed its doors at the end of an eight-day session. At the opening ceremony, the international prestige of independent television was acknowledged when John Baldwin of the IBA received the Montreux Achievement Gold Medal. It was a particular honour as this is a new international engineering award being presented for the very first time. John Baldwin, head of the video and colour section of our development department here at Crawley Court, received the award for his work in developing DICE, the IBA's digital standards converter, which has got now gone into commercial production and is already in use in several countries in Europe and in America. Howard Steele, the IBA's Director of Engineering, in his capacity as the Chairman of the Awards Committee, particularly mentioned the personal contribution that John Baldwin has made to television broadcasting with his original idea for the digital field store used in the DICE standards converter. Such field stores are capable of holding a complete television field of picture information and are now finding wider application in other parts of the television system. The conference was attended by more than 2,000 delegates, attracted by 140 technical papers covering a wide range of television engineering developments, and over 130 exhibitors displayed the latest in equipment. During the eight-day conference, IBA delegates presented several papers on their engineering work. The first of these reported on developments in very low-power relay transmitters, the sort of transmitters which we'll be building over the next few years to serve communities of between 500 and 1,000 people. This uh, experimental station here has already been built as a prototype to gain some practical experience of the problems involved. The second paper reported on the pioneering work on adaptive aerials, 
which automatically vary their polar diagram for optimum reception against interference from other signals. A practical application of this development has been Sabre, the adaptive aerial system on Alderney, which has made possible the successful extension of ITV to the Channel Islands in colour. John Baldwin, with his work on DICE now completed, described his current thinking on digital videotape recording, another field of development in which uh, the IBA in the UK is building up a world lead. Dr Boris Townsend, Head of Engineering Information for the IBA, presented a survey paper on the use of electronic news gathering in Europe, and although the symposium papers covered the whole gamut of television engineering, ENG, as it's known, was one of the main items of formal and informal discussion between delegates. ENG is only the beginning of what looks like the next revolution in television production, just as the development of lightweight film cameras has taken feature films almost completely out of the studio and out to location, so the new breed of light, portable and rugged electronic cameras seems set to do the same for television. Well, inevitably, a symposium such as this generally concerned itself with the broadcaster's viewpoint, but during one discussion on solid-state memory devices, the suggestion was made that large-scale integrated circuits capable of storing whole fields of picture information in the actual domestic receiver might well be available within the next 10 years for about 20 to 30 pounds. Now, if that prophecy comes true, it opens up far-reaching possibilities in receiver design, because all sorts of cleaning up processes could be made within a receiver to signals of poor quality. It's quite possible, for example, to remove large amounts of noise and picture distortions. It might even be possible to use teletext-type signals and bandwidth compression techniques to build up complete colour television pictures of conventional detail, but by a sort of slow scan technique over a few seconds. But there you are, something for the future. Let's get back to the present and back home with our weekly transmitter news. And first on the list this morning is the Cornholm relay in the Pudsey Vale, just along the Calder Valley from Todmorden. This relay will serve about 1,600 people in Portsmouth, Cornholm itself and Shaw. Programmes are from Granada Television on Channel 61, so viewers need Group CD aerials vertically polarised. That's Cornholm, now in full programme service. Another relay which came into program service on Friday is Thetford in Norfolk. This one is extending coverage to about 2,000 people actually in Thetford, where up till now UHF reception hasn't been satisfactory. Anglia television programs on Channel 23, so it's vertically polarised Group A aerials. So Thetford in full program service. Now a relay which we hope will start testing on Friday, this one's Millam Park up in Cumbria. Some 8,000 people will be served in Millam itself and around the Dudden Sands in Broughton in Furness, Grisbeck and Ascombe in Furness. This relay will be carrying Granada Television's programmes on Channel 25, so customers will need vertically polarised Group A aerials. That's Millam Park then, hope to start testing on Friday. Now one on air fairly soon at Astola Vera in West Glamorgan. The station will serve a substantial number of people, about 17,000, in a string of places around Astor La Vera, including Kevin Bryn Bryan and others. With names uh, like these, the programmes have to be from HTV Wales and the channel is 49, so it's Group B aerials vertically polarised. There are still some problems to be resolved here, but hopefully testing will start in the next few weeks. And a reminder now that we hope to start engineering tests in the next couple of weeks at the two-channel relay at Wrexham Ross. Over a thousand people in Wrexham will be served by this relay, together with most of Rostithlin, Brembo and Abermorthy, and some parts of Ruaben, New Broughton, Coidputh and Rostlana Krugoch. HTV Wales will be on Channel 67 and BBC Wales on 39, so it's vertically polarised Group E or wideband aerials. That's Wrexham Ross, possibly on engineering tests in a week or two. That's all for this morning. If you want any further information about anything we've mentioned, the address is on the screen. So until next week, from me, Wayne Kilby. And me, David Wood. Bye for now.